Welcome, Sojourners. You have found yourself a cozy place here at Sojourners Awake. I'm Jonathan, and this is our production of The Wild and the Wind. Like you, the Sojourners are on a mission. They face conflict and most certainly danger. And in this most recent episode, Samoon, Birdie, and Eris tunnel deep underneath Sultana and find the castle of Dalgoom. Dalgoom is an evil sorcerer that exterminated Birdie's kind many years ago. And now he is destroying the town of Sultana, releasing in a horde of demons. The Sojourners must close the portal and finish off this story and finish off this story as heroes, but not without a little help. And so for now, our story continues. Deep in the bellow ground below Sultana, the sojourners travel to a sunken and ruined castle, now repurposed by the evil sorcerer Dalgum and his host of demonic servants. One by one, the sojourners clear out the fiends until finally meeting Dalgum himself. He mocks the heroes and remembers Bertie's heritage, recalling the slavery he put her people under for many years. After a snide getaway, Dalgum retreated into his lair and left the three to fend for themselves at the mercy of a Frankenstein monster, a horrid assembly of slain henfolk now constructed as a golem. And the sojourners beat that too. Then, from out of the shadows, a man appeared, stained with white, appearing as a ghost in the darkness. After a little standoff, the man revealed himself to be Toady Blackfoot, and none other than Bertie's long lost and supposedly dead father. The two reunited in the swamp waters below, and in the spirit of revenge for the atrocities of poisoning the well of Sultana and destroying the hen people of Stillwater Swamp, the sojourners pressed onward into the castle. And so for now, our story continues. You are all sitting nearby, the doorway to a room where this golem appeared. The steps lead up into this atrium in the castle onto dry ground. And below these steps, the dark lake waters below lap gently and quietly against the stone. A low ember continues to burn over in the corner where you set the stable on fire. Now and then, a shriek of a demon echoes throughout the cavern as it meets a grisly end in the flames. Dalgum left no trace, yet there is much of the castle to explore. To your left, you see a large room protected by a door. And in the back of the castle, there are yet towers to explore, staircases leading up. And in the darkness, one of you has a simple light source providing some comfort to keep you from the pitch black of the underground. Birdie, as you sit there, how do you appear and what do you pay attention to? Birdie is just staring at Toadie, examining his face, kind of his larger nose and larger ears, and then she pats her nose kind of with sort of pride and a little bit of understanding. Like she's just realizing why she looks the way she looks. And she's sitting kind of Indian style, not next to Toady though, just kind of watching him. And Toady whittles a small bone, making a shiv, stabbing it into the dark his whole body covered and smeared in some kind of chalk. And he reminds you, protects you from the demons smelling you in the night. Samoon, as you sit there underneath the ground, 
near this ruined castle? How do you appear, and what do you pay attention to? Samuna is off to the side, um, kind of just tracing his hand along some of the stonework uh, on the wall, and uh, he's keeping a keen sense of awareness um, that nothing else is intruding upon their space. He's staying alert. Indeed you are. As you look this way and that way, your ears begin to pick up sounds in the darkness, patterings and scratchings of small feet, demons moving through the night and assembling, lying, laying ambushes for you and your party should you desire to proceed. And Eris, as you sit there in the in the darkness, possibly comforted by some lone light, how do you appear and what do you pay attention to? Eris is sagging a little under the weight of her breastplate armor. She's quite bloody quite stained and torn. Her hair still manages to fall in exactly the right place. She still manages to keep that angelic glow, but she is looking after the direction the wizard went, and she's starting to feel that second wind, if you will, stirring. She's ready to go hunting. Samoon. Eris, if you would make a perception check. You're going for a 12 or higher. That would be a natural one. You said perception will be an 8. It is difficult to see here in the darkness and to hear, Samoon, you are left with the haunting feeling that there are demons ready to ambush you, and yet they do not make their presence known. Eris, you... You see exactly which way the wizard went. And to the rest of us, we understand that Eris, due to her battle-worn condition, sees the wrong direction. But nevertheless, Eris, you are convinced you saw the wizard sorcerer head straight into the room on the left. It's a small doorway, once barricaded, now blown to bits, shatters of wood lying at the doorway's feet, and the room appears to be somewhat lit with a flickering light. Looks like an old armory or some kind of meeting for a barracks of soldiers. How do you proceed, Eris? So while I'm sitting there, my head's kind of reeling a little bit, and this stench of death is getting to me. And I'm watching that light flickering in the room, and I swear that monster is casting magic, writing a spell. And so I'm going to get up, and what my head says is a gallant leaping to my feet, sword and shield at the ready, and charging in. But what appears more of a getting up and kind of staggering a little with her sword dragging in the pit. And she is going into the room, not saying a word, not summoning anything. Her only thought is, I have to stop him before he hurts my friends. And Eris, your boots splash through the water one foot deep. And then you touch on dry ground as you start to ascend the stairway. Birdie, you see... Eris moving towards this barracks with all the determination in the world. How do you respond? Um, Eris, you kind of look like a, a, like you're a zombie or undead. You're kind of acting weird. I don't think you should go in there. Not by yourself. Hush, Birdie. This no. is a time for stealth. Splash, splash, splash. No, I don't think you should go in there. And then Birdie's gonna just... She's judging by the way she's walking. She doesn't look right. Um, and she's just gonna go and, like, grab her 
belt and pull her back from that room. Birdie, you start to splash through the water as well, though it comes a little bit higher on your body. As you reach over, you apprehend Eris's belt, and the two of you are now standing in the doorway. And inside this room, you see a flickering torch, a bowl of incense that is continually burning. And in the room, it seems all clear except for a few tapestries, fine tapestries hanging from the wall of various demons ascending from the pits of hell. The two of you are now in the doorway. Eris. Birdie, let me go. This is the way he went. We have to kill him now. Don't you see what he's done to your people? Well, I don't think it's smart. I think we need to rest. I think we need to go find a place to to gather a plan. We rest, he'll get away. Samoon's going to catch up to both of them. Hey, guys, wait. Eris, you look pretty bad, but I remember that the nurse had given us these health potions. Perhaps you should just take one, just in case. And he's going to pull out one of the vials and hand it over to her if she'll take it. She'll take it and kind of look at it. And then, yeah, pop the cart. I'll be honest, I forgot we had health potions. How many do you, <laughs> how many do you have? I don't um, I think you gave us three. One each, right? 3d4 three, three plus four have healing potions, yeah. So one for each of us. Okay. Great. She'll chug just the one. I, I'm going to amend that. It is 2d10. Oh. Let me switch my dice then. So that was a 10 and a 2. And then is it plus my constitution or what was it plus? Just 2d10 straight? 2d10 straight. Harris, <laughs> you quickly down this potion gifted by Duvana and you feel the cordial begin to strengthen your muscles. Enliven your heart. So some of my cuts begin to heal and I start to shake it off and see a little more clearly clearly look in the room and just kind of blink. He's not here. Samoon, you are now in this doorway and you see that there are tapestries, various artworks of demons rising to power displayed on the art. And there is an incense that is continually burning in this room. How do you respond? So after he handed Eris the potion, He kind of comes to, and a shiver kind of goes down his spine as he sees. To some, the art would look beautiful uh, in certain instances, but to him, there is like that violence um, kind of resurging in him. And even though he doesn't necessarily see that one from his childhood, he sees some like that one and so he's making connections that he knew there were more but he didn't realize how many more and so he's he's kind of just taken aback for a moment as he's taking it all in and quietly in the darkness demons start to prepare an ambush stalking you because of your low perception at that time, Samoon, you are painfully aware, but am unable to triangulate their location. The next time anyone rolls below an eight, the demons spring the trap. Each of you are standing in this doorway and Cody follows suit, pokes the fourth head in the area, looks in the room and issues a low whistle. Man, well, this is not at all what I expected. What do y'all figure this is? Hey, um, Samoon, do you have one of those, uh, healing potions or those drinks? I just feel like I'm gonna have to punch something soon. Yeah, I have two more in my bag. Can I have one? Just one. 
Of course. She get the nurse gave them to all of us. Uh, I'm gonna step into the room and examine these tapestries and make my way towards the incense as well. I feel like this is some sort of ritual room. Eris, as your feet st step into this room, you hear the echo of your boot upon the stone floor. This tapestry seem to move with the wind. You can swear that sometimes the demons are watching you as you mar march across this room. As you move towards the brazier, the, 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 sorry, as you move towards the bowl of incense, you peer down into it. You see that there are hundreds of demons marching, swarming, as if you are looking through a telescopic lens into the abyss itself. Hmm. Eris, you would recognize this as a summoning room. Do I know anything about how the summoning room works? Because her first thought process is, I need to destroy all of this. Um, if she doesn't know anything about how to properly do it, she's just going to start slashing tapestries and knocking the bull over. That is a very good question. Does Eris know how to properly dismantle a summoning room? My and... thought process was she didn't really get that close to what was going on in her family, which is why she's a little very naive towards the fact that her that Lord Basile is a horrible person because she was kind of kept on the outskirts. So I don't know that she would. Um. Oh, but it looks like Samoon might. I I think I'm gonna go with that, Eris. I would like you to obey your first instinct, and then okay. you may respond. I look into the bowl of incense. I see the moving army, and my gut reaction is just with the heel of my sword to just knock the bowl over and send it scattering to the ground. Can I interject just real quick? Yes, you may. Would Would Samoon have? any historical knowledge given the fact that Fiend are his favorite enemy and the way that he learned about them was through books and lore. Might I have any? Yeah, I'm going to give you a variation of yes. Okay. Not like the all the technicals, but I'm sure I, I'm sure someone's seen some form of thing. So after consulting the fate dice, I determined that Samoon not only knows how to dismantle a summoning circle, he also knows how to summon from this particular circle. And in this case, you would know the name, the true name of one demon with it under your control. Should you perform this ceremony correctly, this demon would answer to you for as long as it is on the plane of Bonsaro. Nevertheless, you know that in order to destroy this sensor, you would need some blessing from a god, some kind of liquid substance, lake water for example, that is consecrated to a deity. Pour the lake water into the incense and shut the door failure to do so would result in the opposite intended of desirable outcome usually stirring up a hornet's nest so we want to retcon some of that Samoon <laughs> well yeah so or that was my question so that Samoon kid like anyway yeah. oh Eris wait. wait 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 like right before she strikes Eris is gonna or Samoon's gonna whoa, whoa, whoa. don't do that but th that what? will be very bad for us. So, I remember in my, in, when I was learning about the fiend uh, a couple of years ago. Well, you see, this place is like, it's kind of like a portal world for them. Like, we can do a thing here that will bring a demon to us or send somebody to them. But there, there's a particular method that these things need to be destroyed in. Well, if, if you think our last few fights were rough, I don't want to consider what might have happened if we actually knocked this bowl over. But if I remember correctly, what we need, a, some type of 
blessing from a deity and I guess what they would call holy water. Unfortunately, the church was all out of Do that. Do you happen to know any deities? I don't know any deities, but... I know. But, you know. Hey, I know. What about that god of poetry? I was just thinking about Malil too, Bertie. I'm glad you remembered him. Wait, I was being facetious. You really know a deity? Oh, yeah, we go way back. I told a joke, and now he tells it as his own. I would really like that god to fight for us because I really want to see a demon that follows that god. I really think he would speak wise words of wisdom and poetry. Oh. But do you want to raise okay. a poetic demon? You know, it's not the strangest thing I've seen. Bertie, do you remember how he told us to contact him? Bertie, you recall that in order to contact Malil, you must play a melody on an instrument. Oh. I think I need to play a, play a song. Cody brings out his banjo. A, a song? Down here? Yeah. I think it's going to help us um, get in the mood. The fighting mood. And maybe get some friends to help us. You know how to play? No, but I can think I might be able to get grandma. Your grandmother. Well, she plays too. She plays the fiddle though, or the banjo. Okay. And then Birdie, Birdie kind of like tries to conjure up the most angry thoughts that she possibly could have about anything. And she rages <laughs> and grandma shows up. Birdie, you recall the atrocities. <laughs> that have been inflicted upon your kind and after seeing the sad state your birth father is in the anger naturally rises grandma shows up and the spirit her ancestral spirit begins to play the banjo hauntingly throughout this this demonic summoning room and toady after hearing the melody begins to play it as well and through your mind, he begins to play on the banjo. In order to summon Malil, though, you do need to roll a, some kind of charisma check. You do need to roll a 10 or higher. It's a 50% chance that he is unavailable at this time. Hey, um, Samoon, I think Malil liked your joke the best. So maybe you can try calling him. Oh, well... I mean, it was a it was a fun joke, but I don't know, Birdie. I'm not. I, well, I guess I can try, but I'm not really good at these things. It kind of just came to me in the moment. Samoon, if you could contribute to this musical score in some way, or land a really good joke, then you may roll. Uh, Samoon kind of sits back for a moment and he thinks. Come on, Joe, come to me. I need something that's good for my little. It's like, well, I'm sorry, Birdie. I don't know that it's really happening, but I can, uh, I can be like a, f a fanboy. Is that what they call the people that follow the bards around town? I mean, everybody needs a crowd, right? It's down to you, Birdie. I'm thinking of a joke. Could you try singing along to the band, Joe? Maybe you should ask Malil to help you write a joke. Maybe he'll show up for that. I'm looking. I might Can't. appeal to Put his your phone down. I'm thinking of jokes. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's down to you, Birdie. It's the moon struggling. Grandmother is playing. You have to roll the charisma check, ten or higher. Uh, it can be performance or persuasion. Fourteen on the die. In the bellow ground of darkness, banjo playing hauntingly, Toadie playing along with it. The song concludes. And in this summoning room, from the very same door that you stepped through, steps a very handsome man with a guitar strapped to his back. He puts one arm on the doorway snapping his fingers along with the beat. He says, well, 
That sounds quite all right. Like the tune of everything you got going on. Oh, and the musician disappeared. We're not dealing with some natural music here. Cody's mouth drops open, drops the banjo to the ground. Malil instinctively reaches for it, and in seconds, as if he teleported next to you, he summons to the side of Toadie, grabs the banjo from him, says, Don't drop such a precious artifact. Hands it back to the stunned Toadie. Tips his hat towards Eris and looks at Samoon and Birdie. Well now, Samoon, Birdie, pleasure to see you again in this dark and dismal place. Kind of looks around and the tapestries seem to recoil at his very presence. What are y'all doing uh, here? Hi, my love. Uh, it's so good to see you. Well, again, I was trying to think of a joke, but I couldn't quite think of one. But Birdie here managed to go to get a good tune going for you. Oh, that's all right. Jokes, uh, it's not really joking season. We're, we're looking for a lot more beats and melodies so this was exactly what i was looking forward to here and i've got it memorized and never gonna leave the old thinker what can i do you uh, for oh well that's good because being down here i'm i'm starting to get scared of more things than just demons like these stairs over here you know because they're yeah. always up to something it's not exactly a place for a summer vacation so i'm figuring you're down here for a reason Okay, so we are here in Birdie's town, right? And, well, the town is currently being plagued by some type of demon overlord, dude. And we actually ran into him. And, uh, well, he's... Anyway, we're trying to clean this area out of the demons. And as you can see here, we're in a summoning room. And we need your blessing so that we can close this door. He takes a look into the bowl. Ooh, That's what we're doing, right, Bertie? Um, unless you wanted to ask him to summon something. I don't, I mean, I guess closing it's the better idea. You know how I am towards the demons, but I will leave it to the better of the group. Eris. Is still standing aside, utterly stunned that they actually summoned a god by playing some banjo music and telling bad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> She's definitely uh, just kind of standing and staring, and like starts to like reach for her pack, realizing she doesn't actually have her pack on her, so she can't start sketching this to make sure that she's not crazy later. That's all she's got. <laughs> I'm gonna say Malil actually does turn towards you. Do you appear spectral or angelic at this moment? Uh, not at the exact moment, no. There's always that little bit of like celestial pizzazz, but no, I'm not manifested. So, in addition to providing the kind of eyes, your armor, and your weaponry, in addition to providing such protection, do you provide conversation or? you more of the silent type. Oh, uh, no, sir. I, I can speak very well. Whatever you would like me to say, I was just, I didn't want to come between you and your friends. Well, blink, blink. In, the, in, the, in the presence of the god of entertainment, it's usually polite to uh, offer some sort of expression, uh, entertainment, or uh, showmanship, or showwomanship, I might add. Um, well, I do not play an instrument, but if you give me a moment, I can offer you a drawing. It's supposed to come from the heart, not the head. I beg to differ, sir. I believe that art of the hand does come from the heart. Well done. I would like to see this drawing. And you can tell he seems to have all the time in the world, despite the agonizing cries from the pits of hell <laughs> echoing throughout this chamber and the pressures of Dalgum on your tail. 
He seems to have no concept of time or space and is just enjoying the present moment. Eris bolts out to where we had our little camp set up, grabs her pack, paper, pen, comes back into where it's dry still. Um, and then she starts to scribble something and then remembers what he says about it coming from the heart. And so then she pauses, flips it over, and draws something else. And it's a very rough sketch, um, gesture drawing almost. When she turns it back to him, it is of a elderly dragonborn sitting in an armchair by a fire surrounded by stacks of books. You asked for a drawing from the heart. This was my dearest friend. And I grieve him still. He looks over it. Clutches his chest. Oh! This is from the heart. You know him. Knew him. He has since passed on. A wise fellow. A crazy, crazy as a loon. There's a very thin line between wisdom and insanity. I think <laughs> he had a foot on both sides. <laughs> his, his laugh echoes through this area, providing some comfort and warmth. It took you some time to draw this picture. Samoon birdie you noticed while Malil you noticed while Eris was drawing Malil was watching intently paying attention to Eris's every move and mannerism every once in a while scratching his chin and muttering hmm interesting yeah how would you respond hey Samoon I think that he really likes Eris yeah you're not dead they I mean, seem to be hitting it off pretty well. I mean, she could marry a god. No? I don't know. Miller seems like a pretty busy guy. But, uh, you never know, I guess. He's into mortals. Supposing she is one. We haven't really asked that question, have we? <laughs> am I a mortal? I guess I am because I die. Well, I take hurts, but whatever. I mean, I might be a god. I haven't died yet, and I've lived a lot of lives and went a lot of places and almost died a few times, but I didn't. That's true. And you remember what Melissa said? If we just think of something new that no one else has ever done before, and then we get some followers, we can be a god ourselves. But, uh, Bertie, what should, um, well, since he's kind of preoccupied, what? What kind of demon are you thinking we should summon? I don't know how I feel, because, like, I mean, um, then we'll have to send him back, and then we'll have to destroy this place, but... I don't know. I think the best thing is to probably close the portal, because these are this is where the demons are coming from that are wrecking the town. I mean, that's my point, to, that's my point too. But, uh, but I don't want to take away any sh strong arm that we can have in, but in this endeavor, but... I guess I was kind of thinking, too, that it might be kind of fun to just have a demon on our side, but that's just me being curious. Yeah, it would be fun, I think, but I don't know that the demons have any redemptive value to them. So they might just be sport about it. Mm. Even, though it's, even though they might be helpful to us they're still gonna be behind us where we're always looking over our shoulder because their loyalties are very forgettable i mean do you think we could summon a demon and send him after the dragon well i feel like if if the dragon has been doing a thing the demons might have already tried or perhaps they're in league together you know maybe they're like Holding the territories. I don't know much about the bigger dragons. I don't I know. I don't know how, how they kind of work. I don't know. I, I kind of think Eris might have a better grasp on reality than us. <laughs> well, I guess we have to wait for her to finish her drawing to find out. 
Cody says, wait, Birdie, you, that's a god? I mean, I think so. He said he was. Wait, like the one who made the world? Well, no, maybe like a lesser god. Shh, that, don't say that. And he's right there. Well, a god, he says he's the god of poetry and music and art. What, like he made it? Invented it? No, I think he actually kind of um steals from us. So he like plagiarizes art and then he makes it and calls it his own. And that what's what... I guess that's how he's a god. That sounds about right. That's the only way to get up in this world is just take other people's good ideas and yeah. I was I figured a god was just a king who just got tired of living so or tired of dying. I don't know. Maybe tired of living so he now always thought he could live and maybe died and came back to life. But I mean if you're you're telling me I believe it. I believe every single one of them gods just took an idea and from some farmer or fisher and had all the power on his side. He's kind of eyeballing Malil, making sure he, he's not listening. He's listen. He's a nice god, and he's gonna help us though. So I would just pretend like his poetry's nice, and we like his art. Just tell him his art's the best art. I, I, I mean, I, I'm not against art or anything. And he kind of looks up at the tapestries and shutters, but I don't think that's gonna help against Dal Gum. Well, he's going to help us close the portal, so let's just let him. I can close the portal, just knock over the bowl. No, I don't. It's a little more complicated because... She was right the first time. She's going to knock it. Now she's drawing pictures. No, That's not going to help. My friend Samoon, he has experience, and it's a little more than that. So I got experience. Hey, Dad. Mr. Tardy, sir. You're from, you're from the town, and... I'm sure you oh, have like, you I'm have not, bees and no, stuff. Let me tell I'm not from the town, okay? I'm not a resident of Tetherna or anything. I am a hardy folk from the backwaters of the swamplands. Nobody owns me. I don't own anybody else. Well, when you're from somewhere, it doesn't mean that the place owns you. Okay, well, I just want to make sure that was straight. Well, in the backwaters, have you, I'm sure, seen like a hornet's nest in the woods? Oh, yeah. And what happens when you go up and punch that hornet's nest? Well, you get stung. How many times? Well, it depends on how fast you can run or jump into the water. Well, I, get your drift. I, 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 <laughs> I get your drift. I know what you're talking about. I don't want to store up a hornet's nest here. All right, so do your voodoo hoodoo magic. Draw your pictures or whatever you think is going to scare away these demons. Okay, Bertie, I'm going to go get some water real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. I don't believe in holy water. I think they just, like, make it just, they just make it up. Hey, you don't believe in a lot of things, but your village was also pillaged by a demon guy. So you don't have room to talk. So you need to just sit this one out. Too soon, Bertie. No. Yeah, I figured I didn't hear any of that conversation because I was keeping Malil distracted from their blasphemy. Yes. <laughs> and Malil is now looking over the picture and, you know, he's getting emotional a little bit, pointing out the fine details and appreciating appreciating the the cross hatchings that you used in the shadows. This is fine work. Fine work. And yes, you're right. True art comes from the heart. Where'd you learn to draw like this? Oh, uh, well, it's sort of a habit I picked up. I was sick when I was little, and the sickness has taken much of my memories of my childhood. And so I sometimes forget things, and I don't want to forget things. So I practiced until I could commit my memory to pages so that I wouldn't forget. Do you know what you forgot? Oh, I mean, just, well, the sickness, it hit the family hard and, and many of us passed away. It took my mother and my father. Um, I, 
Well, it's weird. It's, it's, I have conflicting memories. I'm from a noble family. I have memories of going to balls with my mother, but I know that that can't be because I'm of the lower family and we serve. We don't dance, if you will. So I don't know where the memories came from. They're pleasant, though. Aside from the pictures I have, I just... I just don't remember much. The memories? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, some, sometimes they are. I don't know what's the hallucination and what's not. Sometimes I remember voices in the night. Shrieks. Prisoners. But thy family wouldn't do that. They were a good family. They provided food to the needy, jobs to the destitute. Although I've recently been led to believe they might have started a revolution that has spread. Yeah, no, I've, I've heard of that. You're from the noble houses in Boshan. One of them, yes. Hmm. Or I suppose the only one left. Well, there are, there are plenty of survivors in hiding, I'm sure. I do hope so. You are. <laughs> I am not a survivor, more of a rat which deserted a sinking ship. I am a coward who ran. Rather than sink with the ship? Well, there was an order given that I didn't understand. And instead of approaching my cousin, the leader of her family, to ascertain his reasoning, I left. And from I am led to believe that that is what started the war. He asked us to kill the other families. And you did. And I didn't understand how it helped. Well, you know now it was a slaughter. Celebrated beheadings. I did not know that. She gets a little choked up. I've sojourned in the Mayadaxar Empire and had no news of Boshan. I didn't even know it was a crime to be a Basil until I crossed into Tetherna. Was it truly so awful? It depends on how you look at it. There have been many empires and kingdoms, houses rising and falling, and like everything, it's got a life cycle. And it seems to me what I've learned that at the end of life is when you pay most of your debts. You pay for most of your sins. Peaceful passing usually indicates a peaceful life. That's passing full of strife usually indicates you had a life full of strife and the houses of Boshan for all their goodness they did it was 80 years of strife that ended in lots of blood and strife a new Boshan is being reborn a new time needing new leaders ones with heart Hmm. You've given me much to think about. Perhaps when this is over, I should go back and find my answers for myself. I should have stopped them. You, um, practice any magic, my friend? Oh, only a little. And not so much learned, but just things that I can do, just because I can. By what power? I guess the blessing of my heritage. I've never thought much about it. And she'll, um, she'll raise her saber and cast light on it so that it glows. Just little things like this, and the light can bear me aloft. I can bring healing, although 
She gestures to herself. I'm waiting for an emergency to use that. Hmm. Very conscious. This is from your noble heritage. I can only assume so. I haven't had access to the records, and I don't remember much about my parents, but... And I do know that I am of a... a different species, if you will, than the head of our family, but I'm sure we have our human heritage in common. It's probably on my father's side. He's the one who married into the family. Probably so. How old is Eris? Mm, that is an excellent question. Somewhere in her 20s. Okay. I think mid 20s. Description. Did I give her an age? No, I didn't give her an age. So I don't know. 25? Sounds good to me. 25. For what it's worth, you've lost quite a bit. You've lost your family twice. Once when you abandoned them, as you so delicately put it, like a rat fleeing a sinking ship. That was your choice. And you lost them again by discovering their more unsavory natures. You might have lost them three times when you go looking into the dark places to discover the true intentions of your family behind closed doors puts up a finger to keep you from speaking and says but if I can advise you seek the truth about who you are not as Eris the mortal but where your powers come from beyond your family and the very godlike blood that flows in your body. She blushes. That's a big compliment. You don't deny it, do you? Well, I was spending quite a bit of time with a very wise dragonborn. He made some implications. Very wise. I know your friends were joking about me, about me being plagiarizing and and they becoming a god. Don't tell Samoon the truth. I mean, I like the idea that he can ascend a godhood one day. <laughs> <laughs> but you, Eris, you could. Her eyes get really big and really wide. I, I'm not. I'm not saying it's a good idea. Oh, I don't think it would be. Being a god has um, a certain. The world's really only big enough for one at a time. And where one rises to power, one must fall. So, if you choose to go down that route in your lifetime, just consider you might have to make a few enemies. I think I'll deal with the enemies we have here at hand. Oh, yes, of course. So, about that holy water. Where's the moon? Every story comes to an ending, so for now, we must conclude. Thank you for listening, Sojourners. Your attention will not go unrewarded, and we look forward to continuing this adventure. If you enjoyed this background music and ambiance, you should visit Tabletop Audio. Find them at www.tabletopaudio.com. And take the time to sojourn with us. For articles on playing your very own tabletop role-playing games, visit www.sojournersawake.com. But however you choose to sojourn with us, as always, may your story continue.